Good morning and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha TV and the Breakfast News. I'm Ishan Russell and these are the headlines that we're tracking. Top BJP leaders summoned by party chief Amit Shah on Sunday. Reports say they were warned against making statements threatening to derail Narendra Modi government's positive agenda. Three-member election commission team in Bihar to review poll preparations for remaining phases. Leaders of various political parties meet the election commission, demand slew of measures to ensure free and fair polls. Nepal says it is trying to resolve the issues with the Madesis and the Tharus. And Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister tells External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj necessary amendment could figure in the newly announced constitution. An Israeli soldier has been killed and five others wounded after two Palestinians opened fire and stabbed passers-by at the central bus station in southern Israel. And India lose the third one day against South Africa by 18 runs. The Proteas lead the series 2-1. Well, our top story this evening, amid a growing unease within the BJP over the beef controversy, reports said that party chief Amit Shah on Sunday reprimanded several top party leaders. Party sources were quoted saying that they were warned against making comments that threatened to derail the Modi government's positive agenda. BJP leaders met party chief Amit Shah in Delhi on Sunday. Reports said they were told to refrain from making controversial remarks on beef and dadri lynching incident. The leaders who were reportedly pulled up included Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar, Union Minister Mahesh Sharma, MP Sakshi Maharaj and MLA Sangeet Som. The BJP leaders were also reportedly reminded that Prime Minister Narendra Modi had expressed extreme displeasure on the comments. However, some of the leaders who met Shah denied getting any warning. Agency reports quoted Amit Shah as stating that the Dadri incident was essentially the state government's failure and the BJP had nothing to do with it. According to him, the controversy deflected attention from the Samajwadi Party dispensation, but the opposition parties dismissed the BJP's efforts to put the lid on the controversy as a mere gimmick. Every week, such terrible divisive statements have been coming. What is the point of Mr. Amit Shah raising this issue suddenly, which is clearly not intended to be a real step or a substantive step, but some kind of fulfilment of some kind of opcharikta, formality. Prime Minister Modi has been criticised for not doing enough to rein in controversial party leaders. The BJP top leadership was forced to intervene after the widespread backlash over their actions. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for all the Bihar news uh, related to the elections in Verdict 2015. Now, the three-member election commission is on a two-day visit to Bihar to take stock of preparedness for the remaining phases of assembly elections. In fact, uh, CEC Naseem Zaidi and election commissioners AK Jyoti and Om Prakash Rawat met representatives of various political parties to get feedback and suggestions. Parties demanded a slew of measures to ensure free, fair and peaceful polling in the remaining phases. The major demands included deployment of central paramilitary forces and boots, steps to maintain communal harmony during the festive season, checks and announcement by central ministers that may work as an inducement to voters and monitoring of paid news among others. Now, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar addressed an election rally in Patna where he sought votes for the third five-year term on the basis of his track of development. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar trying to turn the tables on the BJP by seeking votes on the basis of his track record of development. Addressing a public rally in Patna, he alleged that the BJP had betrayed the people by not walking the talk on development. देखिए हम काम के आधार पर वोट मांगने आए भाजपा के लोगों की राजनीति अलग वो तरह तरह का वादा करते और चुनाव के बाद वादे को भूल जाते हमने 10 साल काम किया पटना विल गो टू पोल्स इन द थर्ड फेज Nitish Kumar urged people टू मेंटेन पीस एंड हार्मनी ड्यूरिंग द वोटिंग व्हिच विल बी नियर द फेस्टिव सीजन हम विनम्र प्रार्थना करेंगे दशहरा और मुहर्रम एक साथ आ रहा सद्भाव के माहौल को कायम रखिएगा 
और सद्भाव का माहौल कायम रखे रहेगा तो बिहार को आगे बढ़ने से दुनिया की कोई ताकत नहीं रोक सकती द थर्ड फेज ऑफ इलेक्शन विल बी हेल्ड ऑन ट्वेंटी ऑफ अक्टूबर द फर्स्ट टू फेजेस सॉ फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट वोटर टर्न आउट अक्रॉस एटी वन कंस्टिट्युएंसी ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Now the birthplace of Jai Prakash Narayan Chhapra is going to the polls on the 28th of October. Now even after years of representation in the assembly by former chief minister of Bihar Lalu Prasad the district remains marginalized even today. Here's a detailed report on the district in our special segment Spotlight. Chhapra is the district of Jai Prakash Narayan, the hero of the revolution that followed the emergency. The Janata Dal family has been the undisputed leaders of Chhapra for a long time. It won't be wrong to say that Lalu Yadav has been the political identity of Chhapra for a long time since 1977. But his popularity has been on the wane in recent decades. In the last Lok Sabha elections, Lalu's wife and former Chief Minister Rabri Devi lost to the BJP's Rajiv Pratap Roodi. Despite these setbacks, Lalu Yadav plays an important role in the politics of Chhapra. After joining hands with Nitish Kumar, the political equations in Chhapra have been altered. but there is no dearth of issues in the former chief minister's constituency varsho se jin muddo pe hamesha se candidates ladte rahe hain uska koi samadhan abhi nahi hua hai in the 2010 elections the jdu backed four seats and the bjp and rjd backed three seats each the bjp won from taraiya garkha and sonpur in 2010 the jdu won the pasra amnor manji and ekma seats while the rjd backed the baniapur chhapra and madhor seats the bjp is contesting on 8 out of the 10 seats this time while the other nda constituents will be contesting in the remaining two seats on the other hand the jdu will contest from two seats here while the rjd will fight from seven and the congress on one seat from this assembly constituency all parties are confident of their victory hame anya rajyon mein jis prakar se apni bhartiya janata party ki sarkar chala rahe hain aur vikas karke dikhaya hai woh swarup bihar mein bhi dikhai dega rjd को लोग नकार नहीं रहे हैं वो कल जो घर घर मोदी कह रहे थे आज गड़बड़ मोदी कह रहे हैं वन ऑफ द मेन इश्यूज प्लेगिंग दिस रीजन इज अ लैक ऑफ एनी गुड एजुकेशन एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑल्सो लैक ऑफ अ गुड हॉस्पिटल इज टेस्टमोनी टू द पुअर हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हियर अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इज ऑल्सो अ बिग इश्यू विद मिल्स शर्ट बट डिस्पाइट सच प्रेसिंग इश्यूज पॉलिटिक्स कंटिन्यूज टू बी प्लेड ऑन कास्ट लाइन्स यहाँ समस्याओं पे नहीं लगा जाता है ज्यादा जात के आधार पर लगाता है जब आप इलेक्शन के दो तीन दिन पहले रातों रात यहाँ पे वोट जो है कन्वर्ट हो जाता है जात के आधार पे दी ओनली कंसर्न अमंग लोकल्स इज हु कम्स टू पावर दे शुड वर्क टूवर्ड्स रिजॉल्विंग इश्यूज प्लेगिंग द एरिया रविन्द्र शेरांस रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी After Congress President Sonia Gandhi, BJP President Amit Shah will address a rally in Baksa district in Polban, Bihar. Earlier on Saturday, Sonia Gandhi came down heavily on Prime Minister Modi and the BJP, accusing them of being behind the rise in communal violence in the country. While, uh, in fact, Baksa goes to the polls on the 28th of October. The cabinet will hold a special meeting today over the safety of women in the wake of recent gang rapes in Delhi. A day before Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal met a Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung over the issue and submitted recent figures relating to crime against women and cases of missing children. Ahead of the UN climate summit in Paris, the negotiators will meet later today to hammer out the details of the draft that contains multiple options on how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Tensions are high as the African bloc has dismissed an early draft of a UN climate accord as unbalanced and demanded amendments. Canadians will go to the polls for a federal election today. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper urged Conservative supporters to vote for him. However, the exit polls showed Liberal rival Justin Trudeau is holding a firm lead. The BCCI will hold talks with the Pakistan Cricket Board later today on the future of India-Pakistan cricket ties. Both the boards are expected to meet at the BCCI headquarters in Mumbai. PCB Chairman Shahryar Khan and head of the PCB's Executive Committee, Najam Sethi, have arrived in India to, in a bid to convince the BCCI to confirm the bilateral series in December. 
Now, Nepal has conveyed uh, that its government is trying to resolve the issues of Madhesis and the Tharus. The necessary amendment could figure in the newly announced constitution. The message was conveyed to External Affairs Minister Sushma Saraj on Sunday by the visiting Nepalese Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Kapil Thapa. Nepalese Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Kamal Thapa met External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj with the senior level delegation on Sunday. A key item on the agenda was a protest of the Madheshis and Tharus, as well as the supply of essential items from India. Spokesperson of the External Affairs Ministry Vikas Varup said that the meeting was positive. Thapa met Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh and Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar separately. They discussed the situation on the border and the Nepal government's plans to tackle the agitation. Thapa indicated that a resolution is on the cards, with a formal meeting between the Joint Madeshi Front and the Nepalese government starting in Kathmandu on Sunday. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Time for us to take a very short break. On the other side, we'll be talking about a lot more news through the day, so stay tuned. Today we bring to you the Carriage by Air Amendment Bill 2015. I understand even till now, whatever was decided in 2009, it has still not been ratified till date. Earlier there was a printed ticket. Now try and see how the airlines are saving their money. What is 7,50,000 these days? If a man is dead, his family is dead. Why is this compensation given? To take care of his kith and kin who are left behind. Watch Law of the Land, Sunday 10 p.m. and Monday 8.30 a.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching The Breakfast News. And now, External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj will leave on a three-day visit to Russia today. She'll participate in the annual India-Russia Intergovernmental Commission meeting, which in which both sides will deliberate on strategic issues besides energy and trade. The 21st round of the intergovernmental meet, to be co-chaired by Sushma Swaraj and her Russian counterpart, uh, Dmitry Rogozin will take stock of the entire gamut of ties between the two time-tested partners. The talks are likely to focus on ways to expand cooperation in trade and investment, particularly in the energy sector, including nuclear power. Enhancing trade and economic cooperation is a key priority for both the, both the governments. The countries have set a target of $30 billion bilateral trade by 2025. Now, India, Japan and the United States are conducting joint naval exercises in the Bay of Bengal that end today. Taking part in these war games is the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt and a nuclear-powered submarine. U.S. Ambassador to India Richard Verma says uh, the joint naval exercise with India and Japan is not aimed at distancing China. For the first time in eight years, India, Japan and the United States kicked off their joint naval exercises in the Bay of Bengal. On Sunday, U.S. Ambassador Richard Verma addressed concerns that they were distancing China. This really is not about um, trying to create distance or uh, uh, between uh, ourselves and, and China, but our three navies, Japan, India and the U.S., uh, as I said, are, are aligned uh, in a way. We share common values, so it's only natural that we would be cooperating like this at this very high, uh, very high level. New Delhi hosted similar multilateral drills in its waters in 2007. China saw this as a US-inspired security grouping on the lines of NATO in Europe. Verma said that the cooperation was a result of shared values like democracy, rule of law, resolution of dispute through dialogue. I would uh, hope and expect that India joins our signature uh, Air Force exercise in the United States, Red Flag which will be held in Alaska uh, next year. And uh, India has participated in the past. We would welcome their participation this year. We have active discussions uh, about that. And that would be a, a terrific engagement uh, with the Air Force. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has signaled a more robust security policy, seeking stronger strategic ties with the United States and Japan, while keeping a lid on border tensions with China. In 2008, Indian Air Force participated in Red Flag at the Nellis Air Base, which comes closest to realistic combat situation. 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Now an Israeli soldier was killed and five others were wounded on Sunday when two Palestinians opened fire and also stabbed passersby at the central bus station in southern Israel. Israel suspects uh, that the attacker was a Palestinian and he was killed during the shootout. The, uh, Israel has in fact imposed tighter restrictions in Jerusalem and the West Bank with the upsurge in violence. The latest in the series of random stabbings in Israel. An Israeli soldier was killed and several others were wounded when a gunman went on a stabbing and shooting rampage at a crowded bus station in the southern Israeli city of Be'er Sheva. Police forces suspect that the gunman was a Palestinian. As a result of the attack where the terrorists had a pistol and opened fire, we have six people that were injured, four of them being police officers injured inside the central bus station. One man was severely taken to hospital and received medical treatment. unfortunately confirmed that he passed away a few minutes ago high security is continuing in the area and our police units are still in and around the central bus station the wave of violence have prompted a massive security clampdown thousands of extra police forces and troops have been deployed in jerusalem the epicenter of most of the attacks israel has erected a 5 meter tall temporary concrete wall along the short stretch of a street on one side of it is a jewish neighborhood and other is the outskirts of a palestinian neighborhood which has been one of the flash points of recent flare up of violence in jerusalem the reason the status quo has been violated is not because we changed it we didn't change anything the orders of prayer the uh, visiting rights have not changed for the last 15 years the only thing that's changed are islamist hoodlums paid by uh, the islamist movement in israel and by hamas who are entering the mosque and trying to put explosives there and from there emerge and attack jewish visitors to the temple mount and christian visitors meanwhile pope francis appealed for an end to violence us secretary of state john kerry will meet israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu and palestinian president mahmoud abbas separately in the coming week in a bid to help restore calm your report rajya sabha tv Now after opening its borders to migrants pouring in from Croatia, Slovenia has decided to set a limit on the number of migrants crossing its borders each day. Slovenia says that it cannot accept unlimited migrants and only will only allow 2500 migrants daily, half the number its neighbor Croatia is asking for. Authorities said that they could not accept more numbers as it is uh, no more than a transit country and Austria's daily limit is 1500. Most migrants traveling from Afghanistan, Syria and Iraq are crossing Croatia and Slovenia to reach Western Europe. Migrants are bearing cold weather conditions as they wait at camps in Croatia and Serbia, hoping for an onward journey towards Slovenia. The UN's refugee agency fears that limitation on numbers will lead to a build up of migrants and refugees on Croatia's border. Slovenia has become the main route for migrants after Hungary closed its borders on Friday. katere va u okviru Evropske komisije glede na to da ustrajamo da mi a, torej večega sprejema kot je v perspektivi odliv migrantov ne moremo sprejemati ker bi v zelo kratkem času nekaj dni pravzaprav priš, pri, lahko prišli recimo v desetih dneh do 35.000 migrantov v Republiki Sloveniji kar je za nas sede nesprejemljivo We are seeing that winter is here and the numbers haven't gone down. So more desperate people on the move, the winter is going to add to their suffering. So what we need is to a mechanism where we are able to help them from one border to another border. Time now to take a look at what else is making news around the world in World Wrap. Monitoring group in Syria has reported that at least 40 Islamic State militants have been killed in airstrikes. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that planes that could be Russian or Syrian hit a convoy of 16 militant vehicles in uh, the eastern part of Hama. Charred bodies of fighters could be found at the scene. The officials did rule out the planes being from the US-led coalition. Turkey arrested six people in connection to the bombings in Ankara that killed over 100 people. Two of them were released after questioning while the remaining four suspects are pending trial. The attack on a pro-Kurdish rally has triggered protests against President Tayyip Erdogan and the government uh, and seen as a major intelligence failure. The, no group has in fact claimed responsibility, but the government has attributed the attack to the Islamic State. 
Egypt's long-awaited parliamentary elections have recorded a low turnout, voter turnout of just 10%. Voters shunned the first phase of polls, suggesting that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is losing popularity. Sisi was hailed as a milestone on the road to democracy, but his critics have branded him as a sham. Egypt has had no parliament since June 2012, when a court dissolved the democratically elected main chamber, then dominated by the Muslim Brotherhood. Typhoon Kopu ripped through northern Philippines on Sunday, causing flash floods and landslides and displacing more than 10,000 people. One casualty has been reported in Manila. The National Disaster Agency said the typhoon has weakened slightly after making landfall in the northeastern province of Aurora early on Sunday. It is now slowly moving to uh, its way north to Luzon Island. Workers continue to clear the debris and restore damage in communication lines. Now, opening batsman Quinton de Kock provided the early flourish with the bat with his 7th century, while fast bowler Moni Mokl applied the finishing touches with four wickets as South Africa beat India by 18 runs on Sunday to take a 2-1 series lead. The 22-year-old de Kock continued his purple patch in ODIs against India, scoring his 4th century in 7 innings against the opponents to set up South Africa's total of 270 for 7 and 50 overs as they chose to bat after winning the toss. Well India lost opener Shikhar Dhawan early to Mokul but looked well poised for a victory charge with half centuries from Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli. It's always a big wicket these days, Rohit Sharma currently on form. Opening batsman Rohit and Kohli added 72 for the second wicket before the former fell to a small return catch from part-time off spinner JP Dumini. Kohli then added 80 for the next wicket with his captain Mahindra Singh Dhoni to keep India in the hunt before Mokul returned to strike. India could only manage 252 for six in their 50 overs. I thought uh, bowlers did well. Uh, 270 was a par score, as I said, on the wicket, but uh, it kept getting slower and slower, uh, slower, which uh, made it slightly difficult for us. Maybe a bit more due on the field, you know, uh, it would have been a score that would have been chased on, on this wicket, but, you know, it made it just difficult. The ball was not coming on to the... So which were the crucial setbacks, you thought, in the run chase? Well, I think losing the toss to start off, you know, because uh, you can't really bank on toss. But at the same time, they batted when the wicket was at its best. You know, it was coming on nicely. Uh, and they also found, uh, found it slightly difficult, you know, in the last 10 overs to score runs. And that's a big sign of, you know, the wicket slowing up. So uh, I felt, you know, it kept uh, slowing up uh, as the game progressed and made it more difficult for the batters. Got two slips behind. Earlier, South Africa sent David Miller, who had scored 13 and not in the series, to open the innings to help him gain form and the new opening pair gave the touring side the ideal start with a stand of 72. Indian off-spinner Harbhajan Singh and leg-spinner Amit Mishra stemmed the flow of runs while bowling in tandem and gave away 79 runs between themselves in their 20 overs, picking up a wicket each. The cock, who hit 11 fours and a six in his knock, added another 118 for the third wicket with Faf Duplessis to set up a solid platform for South Africa for a late assault. Duplessis lived a charmed life on his way to his third consecutive 50 in the series. Suresh Rena and Dhawan dropped him twice while the right-hander was also caught when on 16, but replays show Mohit Sharma's delivery was a no ball. And ball that he bowled to Faf Duplessis. Uh, Virat Kohli took that catch, but unfortunately for India and Mohit Sharma, it was a no ball. A move on. His dismissal to Mohit sparked a mini collapse, and South Africa was suddenly reduced from 205 for two to 210 for five in the space of nine deliveries. South African captain A.B. de Villiers and De Kock, who was run out by a direct throw from Dhawan, were the two other batsmen out during that period, which robbed South Africa of momentum. Yeah, Sanjay, it was a very special batting performance. Um, I, I thought Quinton answered a lot of questions uh, just the way Quinton de Kock can do. And um, yeah, very happy for him. And in Fuff, batting at a runner ball on this wicket is superb. Uh, my feeling 100% was 250. 250 is a par score, so I thought we were a little bit above par. And doesn't, it doesn't take anything away from our bowlers. It's uh, an incredible performance. The way we fought back in the field and with the ball in hand. And Mona Morkel once again, superb tonight. The fourth match will be played in Chennai on Thursday. Bureau Reports, Trajitva TV. Looks to do. Very stylishly looks to... Time now for all the other sports action in Sportsbeat.
It proved all too easy once again for Novak Djokovic as the world number one continued his frightening dominance of men's tennis by blitzing past Frenchman Joe Wilfred Songa to win another Shanghai Masters title on Sunday. The Serbians, a 10 times Grand Slam champion, brushed aside the challenge of the befuddled Songa 6 1 6 4 to claim his third Shanghai Masters and ninth title of a standout year that has left him being spoken of among as the greatest all time tennis players. FIFA's Reform Committee has kept its plans for overhauling the scandal plague organization structure under wraps after its second meeting on Sunday. FIFA is facing unprecedented pressure to form a reform its governance stru uh, structure following the May indictment by US authorities of nine current and former football officials on bribery related charges. Many had served in FIFA's executive committee and other FIFA committees. Bayern Munich edged past uh, struggling Werder Berman uh, 1 0, courtesy of Thomas Müller's first half goal to set up the Bundesliga record for the best start to a season with a ninth consecutive victory. German international Müller is in sensational form this season and was left unmarked in the box to latch on to a superb Thiago uh, chip and tap in from close range in the 23rd minute for his ninth league goal as Bayern improved their record they had set themselves in 2012 13. Outgoing MotoGP champion Marc Marquez uh, snatched the lead from George Lorenzo on a thrilling last lap to win a classic Australian Grand Prix on Sunday, with championship leader Valentino Rossi finishing fourth. At the climax of a white-knuckle feast of daredevil racing between the top four place getters, Marquez coaxed his Honda past Lorenzo before the final turn and rode home to win his first at the Phillip Island and fifth of the season. Andy Sullivan picked up his third win of the year on the European Tour as he romped to victory in the Portugal Masters by nine strokes on Sunday. Heavy overnight rain left much of the course waterlogged, but when play resumed, Sullivan picked up where he left off after three rounds. He shot a 66 to end the tournament at Villamora 23 under, a winning margin of nine shots. Sullivan will rise to the world's top 50 with the win, which follows victory at the South African Open and the Joburg Open earlier in 2015. Well, that's all from us. Goodbye.